Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to talk about pure, raw, unadulterated power consumption on my IBM 3650 M3, X3650 M3 server. So, uh, John's touchpad, as you know, uh, was kind enough to donate a bunch of power uh, power monitor units, and uh, I forgot the brand, but it's not important. And a bunch of pigtails and a, UP a card for a UPS, which I will be installing in an upcoming video. But you got to wait. Good things come to those who wait. So uh, what I thought I'd do is set up a, a video just to, as you know, that uh, IBM server does not have any power monitoring capability like the Dell does. Strike one against the IBM, but I still love that server. So what I thought I'd do is I'd do a little experiment to just determine in my mind how much power I'm consuming when running that server and what it's going to end up costing me a month if I were to run it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I don't want to sit here and babble on. I want to get to the uh, nitty gritty and the meat of the video. So let's go there right now. So here we are at idle. In other words, the server is in standby mode <clears throat> just sitting there waiting for either me to uh, remote into it or to come and turn the power switch on and uh, I do have both power supplies plugged in both have green lights so the server is in standby mode so let's look at the power consumption okay so on one power supply it is consuming 11.4 watts of power at idle and on the other power supply it's consuming 8.1 watts of power at idle that's quite a bit of power it's it's actually a bit more than i expected to be consuming at idle and what re what is really troubling is there are two power supplies consuming that power uh why <clears throat> Uh, I'm not in an enterprise environment. I don't need power supply redundancy. I don't have any machines that are that critical that if a power supply were to fail, it would kill me uh, to go down during the middle of the day. Uh, I don't have that problem at all. Uh, not that my battery backup would prevent it, but I can easily come in, pull out a bad power supply, put another one in, and power the servers back up. Of course, I don't want it to fail, but Honestly, I can't tell you the last time I had a power supply fail in the middle of the day. Usually it was after I power cycled a machine. So we're going to have to try a little experiment. But for now, as you can see, 11.3, 11.4, and 8.2. Alright, so now what I want to do is I want to actually turn the server on and let you monitor these kilowatt meters that John's touchpad was so so graciously donated John and and uh, I want you to know I appreciate it and uh, you're gonna play a big part in an upcoming or these devices and what you uh, what you uh, donated to the channel are gonna end up in an upcoming video so uh, thanks again to John's touchpad for the donation and uh, what I did was just plug a power power strip into a power strip so that I didn't need those pigtails all right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the power button on on this IBM. And there's going to be an initial inrush of power as it powers up. So on one of them, it's consuming about 75 watts. The other one about 66. So we're going to let this boot up. These, this is the initial booting up of the uh, system. You see we're up to 100 watts now. And right around 92 on the other so I'll stay on here for a couple of seconds and then what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the uh, uh, to the uh, power consumption after the operating system boots but I just want you to see these are the kind of power readings I'm seeing 92 watts and about uh, let's let's round it up say 93 watts and and uh, 79 watts respective each power supply all right so let's let it boot in the operating system and i'll come back and show you those power results all right so as you can see we booted into the operating system now it's at the login screen and let's take a look at our 
power consumption numbers now. So on one we've got, it's fluctuating between 63 and 80 percent, somewhere right around there. I'll let it sit on there for a minute so you can see it. it see it. So it's seeming it's seeming to stabilize about 60 or 70 watts consumption of power, and the other power supply is fluctuating between uh, 50 and 65, 72, 51. So there it is after the operating system has booted. Now what I'm going to do is let it run for a few minutes and maybe boot up a couple of virtual machines on there. See how if it consumes any more power that way. I don't think it will. I think once it's up and running it'll probably stabilize around these numbers, but we'll see once we put it under a bit more of a load. So as you can see I booted up. I'm sorry I'm doing all this handheld. I just don't feel like switching into OBS, so deal with it. Uh, anyway, uh, I've started up a couple of virtual machines, so let's go over to the server now. And as you can see, I'm doing a, a doing a, creating a, encoding a video. Let's see what our power consumption is at now. So, basically right where we left it, with no load on it, or with, you know, just booting into the operating system. These numbers are kind of fluctuating kind of crazily. But uh, there it is with a couple of uh, virtual servers running. Staying between, you know, the upper 50, or I'm sorry, the upper 60s to the high 80s. Uh, this one, you know, 45 to 60 to uh, somewhere right around there. So not a huge increase in power consumption. But I got two of them. I got two power supplies consuming power. Why do I need two power supplies consuming each one? Let's just round it up and say they're both uh, average it out to about 60 watts per per power supply. It's 120 watts, right? 60 and 60 is 120. At least when I went to school, it was. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of wattage. Not when I was growing up as a kid because we grew up on 100 watt light bulbs and everywhere in the house because our folks were old and could not see. Uh, and so what they did was screwed in a 100 watt light bulb. And uh, so that's basically, this thing is consuming a little bit more than a 100 watt light bulb. And I, I don't, I'm not happy. I mean, that's not a big deal, but you know, it's like, if I could cut that in half or get close to it, that's how much more money I'll be saving in power. So let's play around with this and see what I can do. All right, so I've turned off the power, powered the machine down, still consuming 11, and eight watts so you know so might as well have the damn thing turned on now what I'm gonna do now I don't want to hear any of you screaming I'm gonna go ahead and pull the power cords both power cords because even though the power supplies are hot swappable I don't want to remove I'm just not comfortable removing a power supply with it plugged in and if we come back here to our meter now you'll see we have zero watts all right now what I'm going to do, since I don't have a blank, look, let me qualify this first by saying it's perfectly fine to run a server on one power supply. Both power supplies are not required. That's why it's called redundant. Okay, and it's going to, in my theory, it's going to use less power with one power supply. And like I said, this server, if something, if something were to go down or crash, it's not catastrophic. It's not the end of the day. This is a lab server. If I can cut the amount of power it's consuming, so be it. The problem is I don't have a blank to put in place of the power supply. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull it out far enough so it's disengaged. Okay, you can see there. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug this other power supply in. Now, remember I've told you before, when you uh, plug and unplug an IBM server, it takes about five minutes for the, uh, for the little management board to come online. So you're thinking to yourself, you know, oh, well, you probably have the amount of power halved, meaning cut in half the amount of power you're using. And, well, you would be wrong. Uh, because remember, the power supplies are redundant, but they're also smart. Uh, and they're only going to consume as much power as they need. It's going to try and balance the load across both power supplies. Uh, so where I was getting 8 on this one and uh, 11 or 12 on this one, I'm now getting 16. So 
it's a bit less power consumption and you see the top one is not plugged in anymore but at, at just sitting here waiting to be power power cycled on it's consuming about 15 to 16 watts of power so you can do the math based on your electric rate and see what that would be costing you even to leave them plugged in if you watch Morton's videos at my playhouse you know he puts switches on all on the back of power switches of all of his servers and that's so he can turn them off when he's not using them and I mean completely off because they do they do it's called a vampire draw it's called a standby draw and they do uh, they they consume quite a bit of power in standby mode I'm, I'm really uh, I'm really kind of shocked by that power power level consumption but uh, it is what it is so we'll give this machine five minutes to go ahead and, and uh, power its uh, go through its uh, power cycle and then we'll turn the, the machine on and we'll see what kind of power consumption we get then all right so here we are again still at idle but it's been we've waited five minutes now I'm gonna go ahead and power the system back on and you can hear it firing up and looky there 130 watts You can hear the uh, fans spinning down, 137 watts, 147, 153. So these are 570 watt or 550 watt power supplies. So we're well within safe limits. This, this server is not consuming enough power uh, to even be an issue with a single power supply. What we've lost now is our redundancy. Uh, but as you can see, we're, uh, you know, at uh, after the operating system booted up last time, we were at 120 watts after we had a couple of virtual machines running. So that's our benchmark to see if we actually consume less power with a single power supply than we do with two. We know on idle that we're consuming a bit less power than we do on boot up. I mean that we do it uh, when it's running full bo or uh, running dual power supplies, I should say. I lost my train of thought there. And you can see the uh, system is booting up. So. I'll let this run. I'm going to boot it up. I'm going to boot it into the operating system and then we'll come back and we'll show you what the power consumption is once it boots. Alright, so I've given the machine about five minutes to boot into the operating system, come up and stabilize. And now let's uh, look at the power consumption. Well, would you looky there? It's consuming, if we average it, about 20 watts less of power at uh, at the operating system so we're saving energy by using a single power supply up oh, but then it jumps up now what you have to decide is whether <laughs> we're using enough less power to justify or to uh, be not concerned about uh, failover in case one of the power supplies were to die so in a production environment, a mission critical server, you would never do this. Uh, you would never leave your, your power supplies uh, in non-redundant mode uh, like this, unless you knew that those power supplies were damn good. Now, I'm going to justify it by saying, and I hope I don't jinx myself and cause karma to come bite me in the butt, I've never had a power supply fail on a server except at boot up. So. What that means is, is it's, I've never had one shut off spontaneously on its own, ever. Uh, but I have had them blow up when I've turned them on after they've been shut off a while. And I have had them blow up right after they were running just fine. And I did a power cycle on the server. So I'm not saying this is a good idea. I'm just saying you're going to consume a little bit less power. But not much. And I don't know if it's enough to justify not having those redundant power supplies in there. You have to be the judge of that. I can't, of course, make that decision for you. Now, you're probably wondering why that is. Why has Joe never had a power supply fail like during the course of a day? Well, I've had fans fail on them. I've had them get really, really noisy and annoy people. But you got to understand something. In every power supply, there's a charging circuit. So uh, there's an initial surge of current that comes in and it gets stored in a capacitor and then the capacitor slowly releases the power to the power supply and it ramps up and turns on. Now, 
that's great, unless that capacitor fails. And when that capacitor fails, the power supply is dead. It will not turn on or off. But say that capacitor fails during the course of the server running. So the server has been running a month or two, right? It's been running fine. Suddenly you shut it down. You need to clean it out, do some maintenance, whatever. You go to turn it back on and suddenly the power supply is dead. That's why that happens. Because if that capacitor fails, it's only for the startup of the power supply. Once the power supply starts up, the capacitor is effectively out of the loop at that point and not used unless you turn it off and try to turn it back on. So that's typically how power supplies fail. Now I have had some power supplies fail catastrophically, but it's always when I turn them on. I've never had them fail during the course. Once they're up and running, they usually run. They may get noisy, they may get hot, but they always tend to continue to run until you turn them off. Just a little hint from Heloise there. And keep in mind, I've got one, two, three, four, five, actually four spinning hard drives and one SSD drive in there. They're little bitty two and a half inch drives. They don't draw that much power. What's really drawing the power is the CPU, RAM, and the, uh, the fans. That's what consumes most of the power, with CPU and RAM being first and second place, and the fans extra. But um, it, still, you know, if you just want to run a single power supply, that's fine with me, but keep in mind you are taking a chance. You don't have uh, redundancy on your power supplies. All right, let's go ahead and, and boot up a couple of virtual machines and see if that has any effect whatsoever on the power consumption. All right, so I booted up a couple of virtual machines on here. And as you can see, we're hovering right around 120 watts. So we're not saving anybody at all by not running these as redundant power supplies. I mean, really, we're not. The savings are nit. I mean, yeah, it's it's jumping up to 140 and down to 114 and, you know, maybe down into the hundreds every once in a while. But once this sucker puppy starts loading up virtual machines and using more CPU cycles, and RAM cycles, it's going to consume more power, i.e. produce more heat as well. You can't consume power without converting it into something else. That energy has to be transferred. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> there are physical laws that tell us that. That's why servers heat up the room they're in, because they're consuming and, and you know, producing that power. Remember how hot a 100 watt light bulb got to the touch. But I digress yet again. So we're really not saving any money by not running redundant power supplies, and we are taking a much larger risk. Now, let's see what the power consumption is when I boot up a bunch of virtual machines. I'm talking like 15 or 20 of them, uh, and see what kind of effect that has on the power consumption. Because I'm curious, how about you? So here we are, actually it's been about 10 minutes, uh, and let's look at the uh, wattage consumption. So. 147 watts up from 120 and I'm sure yeah it's fluctuating so uh, there you go and I've got about 10 virtual machines plus two two server virtual machines up and running a mix of Windows 10 and Windows 7 units and just to, so you know the second power supply is not in there that's with a single power supply so at this point we're not saving a thing um, I think this unit is, the, the Dell is smart enough to know that it has redundant power supplies in there and can split up the load evenly among both power supplies so that you get kind of what you would if you had the same power consumption you would if you had a single power supply. And I mean, that, that makes sense, right? Uh, now, it'll be fascinating to find out if the Dell does the same thing, but I'll be damned if I'm pulling it out of the rack right now to find out. We'll save that for a future episode. But uh, I think uh, after all is said and done, I would run this with redundant power supplies. Uh, <clears throat> whether, I, whether I think it consumes more power or not, it's negligible uh, as to the uh, redundancy you get and uh, the balance power. So I don't think it's even an issue. Let's just check it one more time. 150 watts. So there you go. Now what I didn't show you was I went ahead and slammed that other power supply in there and plugged it in while the server was running. I mean, that's what they claim, right? Hot swappable. Well, we're testing it. That's why we have a test server. 
and let's see the power consumption 60 60 on one and 80 to 90 on the other so yeah it's distributing the load among both power supplies I just find that fascinating of course it does Joe you didn't know that already well I'm sure somebody out there on the interwebs would have told me eventually but I'm a kinda I gotta experiment and see for myself kinda guy that's the fun I mean really that's the fun of buying these servers when you think and Morton can correct me if I'm wrong this server probably stocked with what all I've got in it was probably three four thousand dollars at the time you know and uh, a company paid that for it plus the support and whatever else they used and uh, I got the damn thing for under 200 bucks I mean it's just it just amazes me of what what some people or companies think of as throwaway items or they were talked into tossing this into the trash because the new servers consume consumed less power I guess they do but do they I mean, is it worth having to re but you know in a business you can write this kind of equipment off over a period of time so it makes sense to get new equipment because you know it's money it's money you earn you can put back into the business and not have to pay tax on so when you purchase items for your business as long as they are for your business they are uh, they are tax you're not you're not taxed on that income that you use to pay for these items uh, it not in all instances but and that's why companies do it in fact some companies will set up a, a leasing company that will go out and buy the equipment and then will lease it back to the other back to the parent company so uh, there's there's and they do that for tax reasons and if the tax laws weren't so damn complicated uh, we wouldn't have that problem but I again I digress but I'm just amazed by the fact that you know back in 2011 this was the the creme de la creme and now in 2018 it's the crap de la crap and um, they're they're throwing them away I mean you know 200 bucks wow okay well I've ran it long enough I'm in love with IBM and I'm in love with the Dell servers I have I've really had a lot of fun with these with the, both of these servers and I'm going to continue to have fun with them and learn new things and share it with you so that's what it's all about and we'll leave it right there there's our power consumption there and there and we're going to be running redundant power supplies from now on there you go all right you don't know if you don't experiment so and i'm sorry about that little rant love fest about uh, you know enterprise level servers at the end of the video but uh I, I, i'm very passionate about using these old servers and putting them to good use and uh you know uh one of the things i've learned as i've gotten older it's very important to keep your mind active and to learn new things uh every day uh that's what i live for that and my family of course but uh, this stuff kind of keeps my mind active and I love building and playing and I, I put all this stuff I learned here and all this stuff we learned together to good use in my business. So <clears throat> there you go. One man doing it his way. So don't let anybody out there tell you you can't do something. If you put your mind to it, you know, uh, within, within limits, you can do just about pretty much whatever you set your mind to do. Uh, that's been my experience. So that's why I tinker with all these toys in my lab. Uh, and uh, frankly, I'm the king of cheap, as you know. And that's why I buy used equipment instead of trying to uh, trying to take what I have and make it into something it isn't. So we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs up down below if you like the video. Leave your comments in the comment section. And please, if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe. Uh, we can use all the help we can get. We're still waiting to get to 3,000. So uh, I guess it'll happen when it happens. But you know, I love setting those little uh, little markers, those little areas where I can, or those goals I can reach. So thanks again for watching. Come see us again next time. And don't forget that we will see you on the other side.